Hello, welcome to Zoe Care's first ever virtual banquet. Thank you for joining us wherever you are. My name is Cam Johnson, and I have the privilege of being your MC for the evening. In light of these challenging and uncertain times, may tonight's event inspire you to find hope in the midst of the hardships this year has brought. Tonight, we're going to hear about the work Zoe Care has been doing in the last year, be encouraged by one of America's most fearless voices for life, and also learn how you can partner with the ministry of Zoe Care. Before we begin, allow me to introduce Pastor Alex Layton from Bozeman Anglican Church to open us in prayer. Alex? Thank you, Cam. What a privilege it is to be here tonight. Thank you to Chris and to others, the staff at Zoe Care, the board. Grateful for the opportunity to be with you tonight. I'm here tonight because I was saved in a college town. Much like Bozeman, I was rescued. My parents were 19 and 17 when they found out they were pregnant with me. Their priest in 1973, just after Roe v. Wade had become legalized, abortion had become legal, he advised them to abort me. He said, you have the rest of your life. Why do this now? Thankfully, they didn't listen to that bad advice. They kept me. They rescued me. I know much of the experience of John Wesley, who was rescued from a, a childhood fire, and he said, I was a brand plucked from the fire by God's grace. I know that grace. And so many in our world today need to know God's saving grace, that rescue. So thank you for being a part of that. Thank you for the privilege of, of sharing with you uh, tonight. I want to share from God's word, Psalm 139. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. God sees us and he knows us. And it's to that God that we're going to pray and begin our time tonight. Would you pray with me? Father God, we thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to see you move powerfully in our midst. We know you care for the for all life, born and pre-born. We thank you for the privilege of participating with you in that life. Lord, we thank you for the staff, workers of Zoe Care. We thank you for the volunteers, those who serve so faithfully, those who pray and intercede, those who give both of their time and their money. And Lord, we ask for your blessing tonight. We ask for the floodgates of heaven to be opened. Your will is for heaven to come to earth. Thank you for allowing us to participate in that. We pray that you release the resources of heaven into this ministry and through this ministry. We ask that you would save lives, that you would rescue those in harm's way. We ask that you would minister to families, to scared mothers and fathers, Thank you for the opportunity to serve them and support them towards life. Lord, we thank you that you are the creator, that you have made each one of us, that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And we thank you for the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ, for his shed blood, because his blood speaks a better word. We thank you that you are speaking a better word tonight than what our culture would say. We ask that you silence the work of the, the flesh, the work of the world, the work of the enemy, and that you would speak to us tonight. I pray that you speak to each person participating in this banquet. Bless them. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to share with you a prayer for the sanctity of human life. Lord God, thank you for creating human life in your image. Thank you for my life and the lives of those I love. Thank you for teaching us through scripture the value you place on life. Help us to uphold the sanctity of life in our churches and community. Give us the strength to stand up to those forces that seek to destroy the lives of those most vulnerable, the unborn, the infirm, and the elderly. Today we commit ourselves never to be silent, never to be passive, never to be forgetful of respecting life. We commit ourselves to protecting and defending the sacredness of life according to your will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you, Alex. Well, next I have the pleasure to introduce Executive Director Chris Grinnell, who will give an update on ZoeCare. Thanks, Cam, and good evening. In John 16.33, on the last night before Jesus was crucified, he said, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I'll be honest, this has been a year of trouble. And like many across the world, the pandemic has not dealt us any favors. In times like this, when we have to go completely online for our banquet for the first time and not able to share uh, a meal with you like we'd like to, um, we're reminded that it is only by Jesus that we can overcome. He is our hope. He is our anchor. And you and I can accomplish amazing things and do great things through Zoe Care and uh, through our lives. But in the midst of hardship, Jesus is the one that goes before us and enables that to happen. So here's a brief update on how Jesus has overcome for, jo- for Zoe Care this past year. Zoe Care exists to save lives. We help new parents, we support women and men in crisis, we educate and equip, but at the core of what we do is to save lives. This year, 59 lives are directly saved from abortion because of you and your stand for life. About 87% of all of our patients chose life. That is God's victory and your victory as well. So first of all, I wanna say thank you. Thank you so much for making a positive difference in this world, even during the trouble of the pandemic. Patients and their partners share a lot of reasons why they think abortion may be the only option available to them. Finances, housing, schooling, broken relationships, the list goes on and on. We can't address every single one of their problems, but our mentoring programs go a long ways toward uh, for giving them support and the material resources that they need. Being dad and mom to mom um, together served 30 women and men this past year to give them the support and the friendship um, that they needed during this time of crisis. Our new Sweet Cheeks program provides free diapers to, uh, to new moms for six months. We started it in January and since that time we have served 62 new moms with diapers, and we have had uh, an overwhelming response. I wanna thank you for all who uh, sponsored, who provided diapers, churches, individuals who brought diapers by. Um, you, are, you are enabling new moms to thrive. The COVID-19 pandemic has compounded a lot of the struggles and issues that young families in the Valley face. So in June, we we had our first diaper day in which we distributed nearly 10,000 diapers to 82 needy families. So I want to thank you again for all those who contributed their time, who brought diapers by, who uh, told others about it. Thank you. It was, it was such a blessing to, uh, to the community, to these individuals, and to us too, to be able to serve um, the people of this valley this way. The program I haven't talked about yet is 45 North, our relationship training program that we present in the schools. As you can imagine, when COVID-19 rolled into town and the school shut down, we were unable to, uh, to present as much as we would like to. We got into two schools in, uh, in the beginning of the year before everything went into lockdown, um, but we're unable to finish out our slate of schools. However, In January, we had a a very significant milestone in that we finished our uh, our curriculum, our personal Zoe Care curriculum um, that we've been working on for the last year or more. So that is a tremendous victory that we were able to accomplish. So this next spring, God willing, and the schools are open, we'll be presenting in six different schools across Gallatin and Park counties and teaching kids about healthy relationships. Thank you again for your support of this ministry, for loving the women and men that come through Zoe Care's doors. Real lives are being saved, they're being changed, they're being empowered. And that during the pandemic, during this hardship, you are making a tremendous difference. So thank you so much. Wow, did you hear Chris say 59 lives saved? 
Zoe Care sees hundreds of patients a year, almost 60 of those, were vulnerable to choose abortion, but they chose life instead. If only one life were saved, our efforts would be more than worth it. Real lives are being saved, changed, and empowered through your support. And now we will hear a testimony from Paige, one of Zoe Care's patients who has received hope through Zoe Care. Hi, my name is Paige. I am a mom of two. I'm a Zoe Care patient, and I'm here to tell you my experience with Zoe Care. When I got pregnant with my daughter, I was pretty excited, and I came to Zoe Care with that pregnancy because a friend had told me that they do free ultrasounds and that. They help you with whatever you need afterwards, you know, helping with whatever decisions you decide. And they had lots of great programs to help, you know, any kind of mom, single moms, or moms that aren't single moms, anything like that. So that's why I chose Zoe Care was because they are very helpful. My first experience when I came to Zoe Care, um, they were very helpful and friendly. Every time I come in, they're always friendly and you know, they help you with any kind of issues that you have or anything like that. I chose the mom to mom program because with my daughter, I she was my first. So I I had like no idea of any like mom tips or anything like that. And they told me that the mom to mom program, you come in and you watch videos about your pregnancy and how to be a mom to begin with and everything like that. So. I figured it would be a good program just to get some good mom tips and learn how to be a good mom and it's helped me quite a bit. You know, I learned a lot of things watching the videos with my mentor and even just talking to her, she taught me quite a bit. One of the things my daughter does that makes me really happy is she's happy. She's a very happy baby. I always get lots of compliments on how happy she is and how calm and like relaxing she is that she's not all crazy and like whining all the time so she's a really happy baby and that brings me a lot of joy to know that I make her happy and her dad and I make her happy and um, right now she's learning to walk she walks like 25% of the time she's getting there she still falls a lot but that's another thing that's been really exciting is watching her learn how to walk with my new pregnancy, it was totally unexpected. <laughs> I only took a pregnancy test because I had a bunch of friends and families say that I looked like I was pregnant or they're like, are you sure you're not pregnant? So I took a test to show them that I wasn't because I didn't think I was. And then when I got a positive pregnancy test, I came to Zoe Care a few days later and turns out I was a whole 18 weeks and had no idea the entire time. And another really exciting part about this pregnancy is this is the first boy in over 32 years in mine and my husband's family. So that's really exciting. He's, he's gonna be definitely spoiled because my mom has eight granddaughters and this will be her only grandson. <laughs> so I decided to come back to Zoe Care because my experience with my daughter was such a really good experience and like I said before I learned a lot with my mom to mom mentors so I also chose the same mentor so because she has three kids so I figured um, she could help me a lot with my second pregnancy because um, it's definitely stressful and um, I'm pretty scared because my daughter just turned a year old so this pregnancy was unexpected and I'm pretty nervous to have two babies under the age of two and I feel like my mentor and all the other employees at Zoe Care can help me learn, you know, how to be a mom of two young babies and they can help me get through it and figure out, you know, how to be a mom of two kids under the age of two. <laughs> I think it's great, you know, that people are supporting Zoe Care and like donating to them. Um, if it wasn't for Zoe Care, a lot of moms like me wouldn't have the option of like coming here and getting the free initial ultrasound and the pregnancy test to find out whether you're pregnant or not. They also have the Sweet Cheeks program where you get free diapers for the first six months, which that was a huge blessing to me with my daughter. I'm also going to do it with my son. Um, 
it's it's been a huge help in you know becoming a mom and everything and I feel that it would help a lot of new moms and people like me. Thank you Paige for sharing. As we just heard, Zoe Care provides hope and tangible help to our patients in a variety of ways, from ultrasounds to mentoring to free diapers and other necessities. Like Paige and her husband, we are empowering and offering hope to many others in our community. Friends, here is a glimpse of the ongoing legacy of your prayers, love, and financial support to the ministry of Zoe Care. These precious babies are just a few of the reasons Zoe Care does what it does. Each of those sweet faces have been known in love from before the foundations of the world by their Creator. As you may already know, Zoe is the Greek word for life. Because of your support and the ministry of Zoe Care, each of them and many more have the potential for the abundant life Jesus came to bring. I'm really excited to introduce to you tonight's keynote speaker, Ryan Bomberger. Though he was conceived in rape, Ryan's biological mother courageously chose life. Ryan was adopted at six weeks of age and grew up in a loving, multiracial Christian family. With 13 siblings of varying ethnicities, 10 of whom were adopted, he grew up with a great appreciation for diversity. 
His life defies the myth of the unwanted child as he was adopted, loved, and has flourished. Today, he is an Emmy Award-winning creative professional who, along with his wife, Bethany, founded the Radiance Foundation, a life-affirming organization. Thanks, Cam Johnson. Thanks, Zoe Kerr. I, I am so grateful for the life-saving, life-changing work that you do. In the last year that you reported, you say 59 precious babies? Come on! You are the embodiment of hope. I love hope. Who doesn't love hope? I'm Ryan Bombiger. I'm the Chief Creative Officer of the Radiance Foundation, and I love creating stuff. Stuff that illuminates the simple truth that every human life has purpose. So from memes to videos to fact sheets and infographics and articles that take hundreds of hours of research, we love bringing context and clarity to culture shifting issues. And we have so many God-given opportunities to be able to speak truth in so many different places, whether there are college campuses like Princeton and Harvard and University of Notre Dame, that list goes on and on, and conferences, high schools, Capitol Hill briefings. There are so many opportunities that we have been given to be able to creatively illuminate that life has purpose and we love doing it. And what motivates us? Love. First Corinthians 13, six says, love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices in the truth. Come on. This is why we're motivated to do what we do. I know that's why Zoe Care is motivated to do what they do every single day. Love is what propels us in all of this. Stronger. I love talking about this, partly because the beauty of it is that we were not designed to, to live life on our own, to do it on our own strength. I'm a firm believer in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things, not some things, but all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, I want to share some of my story with you tonight, and I have to go way back. I'm not going to tell you how many years back, but I'm going to go way back. See, my parents know a little bit about bringing hope in the midst of hardship, they adopted 10, count them, 10 children after having three biological children. And it was definitely not picture perfect. Life is never picture perfect. Human beings come in all different shapes, sizes, colors, and abilities. No matter how much we plan, no matter how much we think we're prepared, the unplanned happens all the time. It's how we respond to the unexpected that shows our true humanity. But many do not see the value of every human life. Too many are willing to discard those who don't fit the picture of perfection. Abortion destroys the chance to love and to be loved. We never know what will fill the frames of our lives or how empty those frames can be when we allow exceptions. See, my family is full of exceptions, full of human lives that others would have said, ah, they were unplanned or they're not picture perfect. They don't fit that picture of perfection. They are disabled in some sort of way. Then they just, they'd be better off just not here. My family is full of those exceptions. I'm one of those exceptions. See, my family actually started off as every family does. I guess they have to start off small and then you build, right? But these are the original bombs, the original Bombergers. You can see five of them. And people probably look at this picture and say, hey, this is picture perfect. You have three kids, you're good. But see, here's the amazing thing. God knew that they weren't done. In fact, God spoke to my mom before she ever got married, actually at the age of five. See, my mom was placed in a children's home for one year while her parents were separating. She had an alcoholic father who was you know, emotionally and psychologically abusive. And so she was placed in this children's home. And it was at the age of five that she made a promise to God to be a mommy to kids who didn't have one. That's where that heart of adoption started. Met an amazing man, my dad, Henry Bomberger, who had the same heart because if you're going to adopt 10 kids, you should probably be on the same sort of wavelength. And so that's where that heart of adoption started. People often ask me, well, what, what influenced your, your parents? What inspired them to adopt? And it was because of brokenness. See, this is the thing about adoption. 
Adoption in the natural and the supernatural brings healing and restoration and wholeness to what is broken. As Christians, we should understand adoption so much, so much more than we do. It shouldn't be second or third nature, it should be first nature because the whole essence of, of salvation is adoption. There's no salvation without adoption. And I just love the fact that my mom and my dad love the mess out of all of us. See, this is what happens when you love Jesus. The natural outflow of that is loving people. Yep, that's me. That was actually the first day my mom was able to hold me. I was six weeks old. I was the first one adopted and it went really well, obviously, because every year there was a new flavor added to the family. This is actually my dad. And I, I just want to pause here for a moment because fathers really get the raw deal in our culture today. It's so crazy. We need our fathers. I have an amazing father, a, a man who, who loved children that other men abandoned. My dad is the most amazing man that I know. He's a man full of integrity, the same man at home as he was in public. He's the reason why I am the man I am today, the father that I am today. I love my parents. I'm so grateful for them. And they loved us. They didn't see us the way that the world saw us. They saw us as children who were meant to be, regardless of our circumstances. And so here's our family when we were still a small family of eight. And I love this article. It's one of the few that my mom agreed to do. My mom and my dad weren't the kind of people who just did interviews left and right. But I love that she did this particular interview because the journalist got it. Just look at the title. Quote, unwanted children, unquote, find their wanted. See, there's no such thing as an unwanted child. We're all wanted by someone. And so here our family grew and I mentioned, you know, that new flavor every year. So these are all the Bomberger kids, all the siblings. I have six brothers, six sisters. We obviously don't look alike. We're white and black and white and black, Native American, Vietnamese. Some have learning disabilities, some have physical disabilities. Everyone in this picture has special needs, just like everyone watching has special needs. Yeah, that's right. And those special needs are to love and to be loved. And here's the thing about growing up. I don't know if you noticed my, my skin color, I'm slightly brown. I love all these different hues of skin. God created color and, and he loves color. He created color for us to celebrate, not for us to separate ourselves with it. And that's why growing up in a family like this and this kind of diversity, one of the things that I, I learned so powerfully is this. We are one human race. Come on. Man, if we could just wrap our heads and our minds around that. Acts 17, 26. Out of one blood, God created us all. And this is one of the most powerful things I learned growing up in this family. It's not that we were asked to be colorblind or, or were moved or motivated to be colorblind. No way. The exact opposite. See color and love it. God created it for us to celebrate, not to separate ourselves by it. And so now when you hear those words, unwanted child, because this is kind of at the center of the whole abortion debate, that somehow a life that is unwanted isn't worthy of life. The status of our, our wantedness doesn't change the condition of our worth. And so when you hear those words, unwanted child, I don't know what image you may have in your mind, but I want to replace that image. I want to take it and replace it with this. This is my family, my childhood family. It's my brothers and my sisters, their spouses, their children. Of course, my, my beautiful wife, Bethany, and my kiddos are in here. No extended family members except one little grandma in the middle of the picture. But this is what unwanted looks like. <laughs> Love makes us stronger. Man, look at this. This is the whole Baumberger family. In fact, but this is the whole Baumberger family a few years ago, because this is about four years ago now, and there have been 14 beautiful human lives added to this whole mix through marriage, through adoption. <laughs> this is what happens when you defy the world's low expectations. And you know, this picture is made possible too because of courageous birth moms, a lot of them. Women who chose to be stronger than their circumstances. And you know, I, I'm asked all the time, well, have you ever met your birth mom? And I, I have it. I searched for her years ago and the search came up negative in that there was no response. So I don't even know if she's alive. But over the years, as a creative, I've tried to figure out how do I even say thank you to my birth mom? 
to someone who went through nine months of a traumatic pregnancy? What words do I even use? And so there was a time years ago, I wrote this song called Meant to Be. And then several years ago, I wanted to try to create something visually that showed all the things that I've been able to become in my life by the grace of God because of her singular decision. We often don't think that way. We don't often think how a singular decision will have reverberations for generations. And so I, I created this, this video that just shows all these things I've been able to become in my life, all because of that one decision. I sang, I wrote the lyrics and sang the, the little jingle, I guess, to this in hopes that one day, even if I don't get to meet her face to face, that maybe online, maybe she will see this video and know that the son that she gave life to, the son that she chose to be stronger for, so forever grateful. If I never get to have a conversation with her, this video would be that conversation. You couldn't see what I would be. It wasn't part of your plan. Stronger than your circumstance, you gave my life chance touching the future before it began you're the reason I am here I will deep down in my soul my life has purpose Wow, that, that video never gets old for me. Every time, I, every time I see my kids, every time I look into my beautiful wife's eyes, I'm just reminded of the courage of my birth mom. I am that 1% that is used 100% of the time to justify abortion. But here's the thing, I was conceived in rape, but I was adopted in love. The circumstances of our conception never change the condition of our worth. Adoption unleashed purpose in my family, in my childhood family, and my, my, my family right now with four kiddos, two of whom were adopted. And I think of the antithesis to that, it's how abortion crushes purpose. And I think of who leads that charge, Planned Parenthood. Let me just give you an idea of, of the way that they... <laughs> They address adoption. This has been on their website for years. It's under their tool for educators. And this is what they had to say about adoption. They say, quote, the psychological responses to abortion are far less serious than those experienced by women bringing their unwanted pregnancy to term and relinquishing the child for adoption, end quote. Well, of course, if you're demonizing one of the only two alternatives to the violence of abortion, are you really pro-choice? It's amazing what we do with semantics, right? But see, Planned Parenthood's not about giving an actual choice. They're not about instilling hope, but they are about generating customers. And what kind of customers? The kind of revolving door customers who keep coming back over and over again. Look at this from their teen Tumblr page. There's a question that's being asked about, is it wrong to be promiscuous? Now, keep in mind, Planned Parenthood gets half a billion taxpayer dollars every year. And this is their response to a teenager asking about being sexually promiscuous. And they say, since the number of sexual partners you've had doesn't say anything about your character, your morals, or your personality, or about anything at all, really, there's nothing bad or unhealthy <laughs> about having a big number of sexual partners. I know this is the exact opposite of what's taught in Zoe Carrot's 
45 North relationship training program for middle schools and high schools and youth groups. Our youth are precious. They're precious and they deserve so much better than the distortions our culture holds up as freedom. And then people will often say, well, look, abortion is the only thing Planned Parenthood does and they do all these other good things. Of course, good things, how do you define that? Mainstream media is constantly you know, defending Planned Parenthood. They say, well, they do offer all these other services. What they don't tell you is that all those other services have been plummeting for over 10 years. In fact, you look at this fact sheet, one of the ones we created, it's called Less Care. Uh, less care no matter what. You can see the URL there. You can look at the article and get these numbers. And these are actually from Planned Parenthood's own annual reports. But look at this. Breast cancer exams are down 68% in the last 10 years. Pap tests are down 72%. Prenatal services, which barely even exist, 0.1% of Planned Parenthood services are prenatal care. But they're down 76% in the last 10 years. But what's not down? Abortion. Abortions are up 4% in the last 10 years. And you know what else is up? Profits, lots of it. Their profit boomed 600% in the last 10 years, even though they serve 600,000 less clients per year now than they did 10 years ago. But to understand this, you have to understand the DNA of Planned Parenthood. I just wanna give you this quote. This is the former president of Planned Parenthood, Cecil Richards. And in the New York Times, this is the quote where she's defining who and what Planned Parenthood is. And she says, quote, we aim to be the largest kick butt political organization, end quote. But here's the difference between Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry and Zoe Care. See, Zoe Care, I would say, wants to be, you know, a, an amazing and incredible transformational organization. And that's the difference. If I had to distill the difference between uh, the abortion industry and Zoe Care into a meme, it would look like this. The abortion industry lures women with their lies. Zoe Care loves women with their lives. When the abortion industry tells women, nope, you can't overcome, which is really strange in a culture that says women are, are, are everything, you know, the future is female, but no, you can't get over this. You can't, this is insurmountable. This is an unplanned thing. You can't get over this. So when the abortion industry constantly is telling them, nope, you've got places like Zoicare saying, hey, we've got hope. That changes everything. It's why they pour themselves into women, every woman who comes into their clinic. Their mom-to-mom -mom mentoring program uh, changes lives. Back in June, Zoicare gave out 10,000 diapers to families in need, 10,000 diapers. Abortion facilities aren't handing out free diapers or free anything. There is such a contrast. How much more during this time of COVID where, you know, you have every corner of the, you know, the television and Hollywood and entertainment and politics all trying to tell us fear, fear, fear. Well, guess what? Fear is reliance on the wrong source. So in the chaos and the confusion of this coronavirus craziness, there is a constant and his name is Jesus. Our God is a constant God and we're called not to fear. And that's why I'm so grateful for pregnancy clinics like Zoe Care who, who, who aren't instilling fear, but instead taking that fear and exchanging it with hope. This is what they do. And not only do they instill hope in women, they instill hope in men. See, this as a dad, this is this is one of my favorite memes right here. Dads always matter. <laughs> See, Zoe Care believes that dads matter. I love that they have a fatherhood mentoring program called Being Dad. As a father of four, my, my kids need me. They need their mama too, and their mama is awesome, and she's incredible. But moms and dads, we play different and equally important roles. We do. So this is why I love when we have people who understand our worth, when people see us through a lens, a biblical lens, and understand that we are worthy of life, that we are worthy of love and compassion, then we could be stronger than our circumstances. Wow, what a difference when someone speaks life into you, that you can be stronger than your circumstances. And when you volunteer your time and when you give of your money to 
places like Zoe Care, you're not just impacting someone in that moment, you're impacting generations. It's such a powerful thing. And when you see it over and over again, it's like, wow, God, thank you for allowing me to play a role in that moment of human triumph and that lifetime of human triumph. See, my wife knows what it means to be stronger than our circumstances. See, my wife was a single mom for two years and <laughs> she knows what it, the whole thing about bringing hope in the midst of hardship, that was what she was relying on. She was in an abusive relationship. She walked away, finds out that she's pregnant and this is in her 20s, she was a teacher. She never considered abortion, but the pressure on her to abort was just insane. Of course, the biological father, he wanted the child aborted, didn't want anything to do with the child. Her fellow teachers, thinking that they were being compassionate, would say things like, well, just abort it. Some even offered to pay for the abortion. She, it was not part of her whole deal. She never wanted uh, to have an abortion. And she obviously never pursued that because she knew, she knew that she could be stronger than her circumstances and that her unborn daughter deserved so much better. So when the fellow teachers would say, just abort it, they just didn't realize that God already had a name for her. Her name is Radiance. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, C, L, P, U, S, T, O, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now I know I A, B, C. Now tell me what to do to me. Good job, give me five. Gosh, I love that little girl. <laughs> In fact, here is a photo on our wedding day. Not only did I marry the love of my life, I became an instant dad to this precious, precious little girl. And on that day, three became one. Look, we can all be stronger than our circumstances. This is how we're wired. Had Bethany not chosen to be stronger, she never would have realized the joy the, the incredible love of that child who is now 15 years old, driving a car. <laughs> this, is, this is my radiance, this is our radiance. She's just, I'm a little biased because I'm her dad, but she's beautiful inside and out. Her life and millions of others like hers prove the simple truth that some of the best things in life are unplanned. Had my birth mom not chosen to be stronger than her circumstances, this whole timeline <laughs> that I exist in, that my family is part of, we wouldn't exist. When she made that singular decision, she never could have known what the future would hold. God knew. And when I talk about those beautiful reverberations, oh, these are my, these are my favorite reverberations. This is my family, call us the bombs. You know, short for the bomb burgers. <laughs> these, these precious lives, they are here because someone had to have spoken hope into my birth mom. This is my daughter on the left, my youngest daughter, Aaliyah, my Ray Ray, Radiance, the love of my life and the executive director of the Radiance Foundation, Bethany, and my oldest son, Makai, and my youngest son, Justice. I love all these kiddos like crazy. Three out of the four were unplanned. What does, even, what does unplanned even mean? Humanly unplanned? Okay. Doesn't matter. Psalm 139 doesn't have an asterisk. It says, oh wait, you're fearfully and wonderfully made if you were humanly planned. Nope, doesn't say that at all. We are all fearfully and wonderfully planned because we are part of God's divine plan. And when places like Zoe Care play a role in speaking life and hope into others, whew, they're so powerfully fulfilling that plan. I love when our kids are able to be involved in our ministry. We travel together a lot. Sometimes our kids speak at events, sometimes they sing, sometimes they pray, help lead prayers, and sometimes they set up the display table, and they're just involved in so many different ways in the creative part of it too. We have a podcast called Life Has Purpose. It's at lifehaspurpose.com, and they're 
woven throughout a bunch of the shows. They they love it. But there was a time there was a time when I made that video that you saw earlier of all the things I've been able to become in my life by the grace of God. And I was finishing that up and my youngest daughter, Aaliyah, came in and she heard me singing the parts and heard the music. She said, Oh, I like that song, Dad. Can I can I sing to that? Now this at this time, my little girl would never sing publicly in front of anybody, but anytime she ever asked to sing and wanted to be recorded, I was like, yes, let's do this. Man, I'm a savvy dad, I'm just gonna be honest. I, I, I think I will just cry at the drop of a hat. It's just, just something, the way that I'm wired. But when she started singing, like she didn't know what to sing. So she, she said, uh, Dad, what should I sing to the this track? I said, baby girl, just sing whatever comes to mind. So she's just singing whatever's coming to mind. She does all the harmony parts. I didn't even give her the harmony parts. She just sings. I just hit record. But as she's singing, I'm just reminded of the fact that someone chose to be stronger than their circumstances. Someone grabbed on to hope. And this little girl singing, <laughs> she's singing because of that courage. So I'm, I'm crying as she's singing and laying down these tracks. Well, instead of talking about how about I play it for you, here's just a little snippet of that with my, my little Leah. She was, she was 10 years old at the time when she sang this. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine through me. When you let God's light shine through you, when you speak life and speak hope into others, when you give of your time and your generous gifts to Zoe Care, you make lives like mine and my children possible. So we're here tonight because we believe in this powerful cause. We believe in bringing hope in the midst of hardship. And you could play a role in that. In fact, many of you have this card, so it's the giving card. And you will see that it needs your name, needs your address and all that vital information. But there's something really important on the back. You, you can give a one-time gift, which is great and powerful. And you have the options. And I love that they start off with a $10,000 option. So why not? So they're going to ask $10,000, $5,000, $1,240. What is that strange $1,240? Let me explain that to you. Because that provides full support for one new mom and dad, from ultrasound through mentoring, for both of them individually. A baby gift, usually a stroller, car seat, or something like that, and six months of free diapers and wipes after the child is born. Come on, who says that pro-lifers don't care about children after they're born? We are the ones who care, and we show that care through our support and Zoe Care. There are also monthly gifts, and this is so crucial because monthly gifts are so vital you can give monthly gifts. There are 1,000, 500, 250, 150. There are so many different options and there are different ways that you can have that withdrawn. So here, you can see the card. You can pay with cash or check. You can pay with your credit card or a bank account withdrawal. And this is, this is the whole thing. Not only do they want you to give that 1240, you can always give more, of course, than the 1240. You can add another zero onto that one if you'd like to. But this is so crucial because they understand what it takes to invest in a life. And not just a single life. It's the life of the mother, it's the life of the father, it's the life of the unborn baby. So will you consider right now what you're willing to give, how you're willing to actually bring hope in the midst of hardship. This is the beautiful thing about our, our, our lives, that we aren't meant to travel the road alone. And so if you come alongside Zoe Care, this is one of the ways that you can show someone who feels like, I can't do this, I can't get through. Yes, you can. And no place that you can go to have that hope poured into you. So please take the time. And I, I know it's, I'm just gonna pray. 
I know this is a recording, but there's nothing wrong with praying. You pray whether it's recorded, whether it's live. I just believe that God can do above and beyond. Zoe Care needs your support. And those who walk through the doors of Zoe Care, they need the love. They need the hope. They need that confidence. They need that something that will let them know you're not alone. So let's just go to the Lord. Lord, we just thank you so much that we can be your agents of hope. God, thank you so much for, for bringing people into our lives, for having voices speak into to our, our minds and our hearts so that we could overcome something. God, may we just play an awesome role in helping others overcome. I just pray, God, for the spirit of generosity tonight. God, there are so many precious lives in danger, in danger of not even breathing the air that we breathe. If only someone could have spoken something into that person's life, into that mother's life, into that father's life. And God, the reverberations that could have emanated from that. May we not say we didn't do everything that we could do to help create that ripple effect, to help create and ensure those beautiful reverberations. Thank you, God, for Zoe Care. Thank you, God, for the supporters, for the donors, for people who come alongside this amazing ministry. God, we just pray for abundance. And we thank you for the transformational power of hope. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love being with you. It's it's been great. And I just pray that you just feel your heart moved to do something more. Maybe you've been a donor for a while, but to, to do even more, to volunteer more time, to give more of your financial resources, because it's one investment that you'll never regret. God bless. Wow, wasn't that inspiring? Ryan is living proof that every life has purpose. Love is what inspires us. Love makes us stronger. Love multiplies. God is love, and he demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Why? So that anyone who would humbly repent of their sin and call out on the name of Jesus may inherit eternal life and live that abundant Zoe life Jesus came to give. Isn't it amazing that the Lord allows each one of us to play a role in the eternal kingdom, giving hope in the midst of hardships? As Ryan mentioned, every gift is a blessing, and the monthly gifts are the sustaining factor for this ministry year-round. An added benefit to your gift is that your donation is 100% tax-deductible, made possible by the CARES Act, which was passed this year by Congress. If you're viewing online from home, you should see a blue Donate Now button on the webpage. For those of you who are attending a watch party, Ryan explained the giving cards for you to fill out. You can always support Zoe by donating at friendsofzoecare.org or download Zoe Care's app. But I do want to encourage you to give tonight in order to have your donation doubled the first $20,950 given tonight will be matched by our very generous corporate sponsors. As you've heard tonight, there are many critical ways that you can partner with Zoe Care. Besides your financial support, will you pray about giving your most precious resource, your time, through one of our many volunteer programs? You can learn more information about each volunteer opportunity, again, at friendsofzoecare.org. Or if you are at a watch party, there are flyers available. If you feel led to sign up from home, click the blue Volunteer Now button. Or from a watch party, look for the volunteer form. Now before we close the evening, let's give God the glory for all He is doing through you and the work at Zoe Care for our community. It is my pleasure to introduce to you my pastor, Ted Etheridge from Calvary Chapel, Bozeman. Ted? Thanks, Cam. Yeah, a real blessing to be here with you. As we come to the close of our night, uh, we come to the throne of grace. And it is here that we are reminded that our, our God answers prayer. 
This, this closing prayer is much more than just a formality, but rather it is a great opportunity for us to approach the eternal God, who we read in Psalm 61 answers prayer. The psalmist here says, Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. Our God is a God who certainly hears and answers prayer. Pillar Bible Commentary series author Mark Seifert says prayer should be understood as much more than us simply surrendering to the inevitable will of God. Nor is prayer to be understood as us manipulating the will of God to do our will. But rather, prayer is that grand entrance by, by God's wonderful invitation for the church to effect the deliverance and salvation of our Lord in the earth. When we pray, the Lord is actually using our prayers to save and to win the lost, to deliver the church. And so we come to this place of prayer knowing that today God will hear our prayer. It's, it goes beyond even our human intellect, but we know we have an eternal living God who will right now hear our prayer. So would you join with me as we pray for the Zoe Care ministry right here in the Gallatin Valley? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we do come to you and we pray in the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And we would ask, even now that you would provide for Zoe Care, would you use the gifts that are being given tonight to provide financially for this ministry? Would you bless those who have generously given these funds? Would you reward them? Father, we also want to pray that you provide strength and wisdom and, and spiritual might to those that are employed and serving at Zoe Care for the many volunteers that come through on a weekly basis. Lord, would you use each of these individuals as instruments in your hands to be winning the lost, to be uh, redeeming lives from destruction right here in the Gallatin Valley. Lord, we pray for the unborn. We want to ask, Lord, that you would spare their lives for your eternal purposes. Even as we began in the opening prayer with a marvelous story of your redemptive work in such a situation, like Moses being spared in his infancy for your eternal work. Lord, we pray even for the unborn and for those whom you have great plans for, for their lives to be spared. We also pray for, for young parents right here in, in our own valley. That are, that are right now being tempted or being or that are considering this, this very act, Lord. We pray that you'd win them, reach them, uh, use Zoe Care to awaken their eyes to you, to your love for them, for your love for their children and, and uh, your wonderful plan. And Lord, we pray you would spare those from such a decision. And Lord, I want to pray for those that have been a part of, of a decision to abort a child, uh, maybe their own. Lord, that your grace and your mercy, your forgiveness that extends to every human heart would be realized by these. And Lord, those that have come to you already for this favor and for this grace, for this forgiveness would, would stand strong in the, in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that once you have forgiven us by faith, that we are clean and forgiven. And Lord, I just pray that there would not be in any way of the voice of condemnation tonight, even as we have shared about your great plan. And Heavenly Father, I also just want to ask, Lord, that you would be moving and working and, and finally just using Zoe Care within the valley here. Lord, continue your, your perfect work through them. Uh, continue this ministry to, to win the lost. We pray that the gospel would be going forth in these last days with great power. Lord, we ask that many would see Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord, who died and rose again, that we might have life. And so, Lord, thank you. Thank you again for the generous gifts given tonight. We pray that you'd use them for your eternal purposes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Ted. Well, our sincere thanks for joining us. May the Lord richly bless you, and we look forward to partnering with you in the years to come. Have a great night.